Welcome. Today I want to walk you guys through um, a document that I've created for you to use for taking notes for when you're collecting information on your sources for a research paper. Now you'll notice at the top here that I've got research question listed off as the very first thing. And that's because when we're starting out in that research process, we do not begin with our thesis statement. We're actually going to end with our thesis statement. We actually begin with our research question. Okay, so our question identifies what our topic is, and then we use that to then locate sources that are related to this topic and find information that will help to answer this question. Okay, so we're going to start off with our research question. We're going to start off with this here. So you're going to put fill in this here at the top of the very beginning. I listed thesis statement here, but you're actually not going to fill out your thesis statement until the end, until you're done with your research. And the reason is because when we're following the research process, we want to follow something that looks a bit like the scientific method, which is that we're starting with a research question, we're conducting the research, and then the research is going to guide us to the thesis statement, not the other way around, okay? We're not just defending our personal viewpoints. What we're doing is that we're asking a question, we're going to the research, the research tells us, the research guides us toward what the conclusion is, and that becomes our thesis statement, okay? What I've done here for you is I just put out, you know, what, five or six of these. Uh, these are just indicators that you could use then to plan out your body paragraphs, okay? So that you can plan out what are your main supporting points. And when we're talking about a main supporting point, what that does is that supports the thesis statement. So this is going to come directly out of your research. So you go out, you have that research question, you do the research, and the research is going to give you information. Okay, you're going to run across different kinds of information. As you do the uh, larger points there, your main points, those are going to here become the main supporting points here here, here, and so forth. And for each one of those, likely you're gonna give them a whole paragraph to be able to really expand out on that point so that you can share out a lot of information. Now for each of those supporting points, you're also gonna have details. Those details might be um, evidence, they might be quotations, they might be data or statistics, they might be um, time periods, they might be opinions by experts, they might be all kinds of different things. But those details are then going to support that main supporting point, and that will support the thesis statement. Another thing you always want to make sure that you're including is your analysis. Don't be under the assumption that your reader is going to analyze your research in the same way that you do. So in your body paragraphs as you're writing, make sure that you are including analysis sentences where you are analyzing the information from your research sources to explain to your reader, hey, here's what this information is, here's what it means, here's how to take this, okay? Analyze that information for your reader so that your reader gets it in the way that you intended it to be received, okay? So at the top of this document, again, we start off with the research question. This is the very first thing that we do. We go to then the thesis statement. This is actually the last thing that we do, but I put it at the top of this document to remind you that it needs to go in there because it is very important in your paper. And then I've listed off five or six of these here to where you've got the main supporting point, details, analysis, each of those, each of these as little groups here, like this, oops, sorry. This little group here, that, that's likely to become an entire body paragraph of where you've got a main supporting point, details, and then your analysis sentences, uh, your analysis sentence, which is always going to be in your own words, which is going to explain those details in the supporting point. All righty. And then if I scroll down here, what I've done is that for each source that you're going to collect information on, and I think I listed off this document having like five sources or something like that, but you could copy and paste this 
over and over and over again if you needed a lot more sources or you could cut a couple of them out if you only need a couple of sources. But what I did here is that I, at the top here, listed off the information that you need to collect about your sources. I've been in, oh my gosh, I don't even know, at least a hundred situations with writers where they're doing research, they're collecting information on um, a particular research question, and what ends up happening is then they go to create their um, works cited sheet at the end, and they say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to put down the information of this source. I don't know how to find it again. That's a horrible situation to get into. I think that many writers have been in that situation and it really, really stinks. So what I did to help prevent that for you is to put this information up here at the top. Who's the author? What's the title of the piece? What's the publication? Who's publishing it? What's the date it was published? It's URL if it's an online piece and then it's access date. That's the date that you accessed it. Again, if it's an online piece. I put that up there to help you out so that as you go in and look at this that you can say okay i'm going to collect my information on my source right here at the very beginning so as not to to miss that because again if you don't write down your information on your source and then you um go away from that screen sometimes it can be really hard to come back and find it again so don't want that to happen to you not at all Alrighty, and then the next section that i have i'm just going to scroll down here the next section i have is kind of based off of that um, Cornell notes idea, right? Of where over here on the left, you have um, a list of the, the kinds of things that you're looking for. Here in the large box, this is where you would put your actual notes. And then down here in the lower box, this is where you would summarize that information that you've got. Uh, you could also, if it works out better for you, change this to analysis instead. And that can help with your writing when you're going in to do, do those body paragraphs. Um, change that to analysis so that you've got some of that writing done in advance, um, or at least got the, those basic ideas down. So these are the kinds of things that you're going to want to take notes on when you're doing research. Okay. Yes, you want to find uh, the main points. That's super important. How are those main points helping to answer your research question? what kinds of support, evidence, data and statistics, findings and conclusions, what kinds of things, oh, there we go, what kinds of specifics are you able to collect out of your sources that you can then turn around and use in those body paragraphs, okay? What are those things? Put them in this box over here. And you can also put down quotations Remember, we only want to use quotations when it's absolutely necessary. Um, don't quote everybody around everything. Please don't. It makes for some sloppy writing. So instead, what you want to do is that you really want to quote when there's no way that you could paraphrase in a better way that the original writer did and that their quotation is so valuable to your to your topic that you you it's really just got to go into your piece that's a situation where yes go ahead and put in that quotation the other thing that i put in here is vocabulary i know that people learn vocabulary in a different way the way that it works for me is that as i'm reading something if it's an article or a book or i'm watching a documentary or whatever that it is i don't like to always stop in the middle and go look up a word so oftentimes what I'll do is I'll jot down a list of uh, vocabulary terms that I, I need to look up, either because these are words that are brand new to me, I've never heard them or seen them before, or they're words that I know, but they're being used in a different way, and so it doesn't totally make sense to me the way that this author is using them, um, or something along those lines. So what I'll do is I'll take a list and create a list in my notes over here of those new vocabulary terms. And then after I'm finished reading that article, reading that piece, I'll then go look up the vocabulary. I'll also note down where I found those vocabulary words that come on paragraph 14 or did it come on page 28? You know, you know where did I find those? So then I can go back and cross-reference uh, the vocabulary words that I was looking up and make sure that I understood what it is that that author is talking about. Okay, 
So the vocabulary I'm really doing for my own learning. The other information here is really about collecting the correct kind of information that I'm then going to use in uh, my article, my paper, my project, whatever it is that I'm creating here. Okay. As I scroll through this document, you'll see I've done this just over and over again. So for source two, I've got the information on the source, information I'm collecting from my research, vocabulary is for me, summary, or again, you could change that to analysis if you find that to be more valuable. And since this is a, you know, a doc, you can just expand those out if you find you need some more space, no big deal. Um, there is good research out there around the question of taking notes. Um, because there's some research that shows that taking notes by hand is superior in terms of your learning process and that sort of thing. So if you're one to take notes by hand, I would, I would suggest you do that. It sounds like, you know, the, the information that's come back from the researchers looks like it's pretty good. So do that if that's what works for you. Um, I know that there are a couple of people out there who, you know, as a, a writer I work with, um, she has arthritis in her hands. And so writing by hand is completely impossible for her. Uh, so she does everything by keyboard. You know, you have to make the best decision for yourself. So if, if uh, taking your notes by hand just isn't going to work, then move on. Go back and do that by keyboard. No big deal. So in this document here, I've got, you know, source three, source four, source five. You as a writer could then come back and add in as many sources as you need, copy and paste over and over again. You can recreate this on your own at home um, so that you can create, so you can use this document, okay? After you've collected all of your information, so you've filled in all of these note-taking boxes down here with all of your information from your sources, now you should have an answer to this question, an answer to this research question. Your conclusion, the conclusion that comes out of your research, that becomes your thesis statement, okay? Keeping in mind that the thesis statement is an arguable opinion that you will support in your piece. If that's a paper, if that's a project, if that's an article, whatever that that's going to be, your thesis statement is going to be the arguable opinion that you are supporting within that piece, okay? And then you can use these little note-taking pieces up here to start to organize that information. And then you'll transfer it uh, to an outline so that you can then use that outline to create that rough draft. All right. So this is just a note-taking document here um, around that research process. I know for some people, the research process feels so overwhelming and so complicated um, I know how that can feel. Um, I actually love the research process. It doesn't feel complicated to me. I really enjoy it. I love doing research. Um, every time I do research, I, I always, every single time I learn something new and I, I love that. I kind of live off of that. But I know for some people it feels overwhelming. So if that's you, then I hope that this video has been helpful and gets you started. Anything that you see here on this document that you want to recreate yourself, go ahead and do that. You know, you want to recreate that on a Google Doc or something like that at home to use on your own, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Um, I created this to help you and to make your writing smoother. So I hope this was of value and good luck with your writing.